John, I was thinking uh, this morning, it's been 40 years, there was a Gruden and a DeBoard on this campus. And it was your dad as coach, and my brother was an uh, outside linebacker at that time for Coach Corso. You know, when, as a coach, you have guys that really have a great influence on you. And I remember the first time I ever shared football was right here in this state with Tom Allen's dad. And uh, we went and talked about the split back beer. And I started sharing ideas that way. And again, I was gaining information instead of sharing it really. But, uh, and you've been so great to me, I really have. I appreciate all that you've done to help my growth as a football coach. And, and again, being here means a lot to Coach Allen, our program and everything. So we really appreciate you being here. I'm excited to be here. And I wouldn't be here if I wasn't really interested in what Tom Allen is doing. He's been a great defensive coach uh, for a long time. What an opportunity he has to get the keys to this program. And I know what he's going to do. Yeah. And uh, my relationship with you, we go way back. I got a pretty good idea what you're going to do. Yeah. As long as you don't do some of the things that I want you to do, you're going to be fine. <laughs> but the Hoosiers are, are on their way. I can't wait to watch a spring game tonight. And uh, I expect a lot of progress. What team are you going to be? Are you going to be on my team or are you going to be on the other team? What team are we on here? I'm going to be on the team with the starting quarterback. Yo, you're with me, Brady. Yeah, I'm with you. yeah that's, right. that's right. We'll let you call yeah. a few plays yeah. and uh, we'll roll. Good. We'll get a little West Coast good. offense going tonight. I like it. Let's look at uh, a little bit of Hank here, all right? And why don't you just talk a little bit about Hank and really where it started in the West Coast system and, you know, uh, basically the, uh, the purpose of the play. Well, I give Mike Holmgren, the ex-head coach of the Packers, credit for Hank. You just got to read it inside out and be content uh, with a six to eight yard gain if you throw the ball to the tight end who's a primary receiver. Now, I had a question about it. You know, uh, we, we, a lot of times right now we get that uh, tight end hooking up over the ball. And we give him a little bit of advantage in here where he can work the cavity of it. You know, we talk about if you're attached to the tackle, you want to come in and basically hook up over the ball. But how long does the quarterback hang with that before he continues on with the progression of it? Well, our quarterbacks, we trained them on Hank you're going to throw the ball to the primary over the ball every time. If that backside linebacker squeezes them, we're working down here yes. to the curl flat concept. But we never made Hank an option route to a primary receiver. Right. But what happens is against this quarter's coverage, yes. you got no chance. Yeah. That's why I'm here to see what Tom Allen's doing. He's taking that play away. So now we start jerking. That's right. You know, you run a little jerk route, yeah. and that becomes a better play and a different play entirely. Yeah. Here we go again. This is where the guy worked in. And, uh, and I didn't like really right here on this particular play. He really should have used the cavity right here of hooking up over the ball. He kind of brought it a little bit narrow, but here we're throwing the ball to the, the uh, curl. It's good. On time, as long as you're on time with your feet, it's important that the curl route runner beats the corner, right? He's That's got right. a win on his own. That's right. He doesn't know if he's going to get the ball or not, but he does a nice job coming back downhill to the quarterback. Yeah, I thought that was a great route by him, as you just mentioned, driving and coming back to the quarterback all the time. We told our primary, though, the man running the hook over the ball, yes. I wanted him to charge. Charge. Get your depth and get over the ball. You can use the A gap between the guard and the center on either side. You can shade a gap to yes. get open, right. but get your eyes around. And a lot of times we would throw it to the tight end in hot fashion if the linebackers were really dropping. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, what you've done with the play against quarters coverage is taking it a step further by giving him a chance to win. Stick, talk to me a little bit about Stick and the West Coast system and you know how that came about. Well, you know, you got Y stick to the tight end, you can throw an X stick to the split end. Heck, we threw Z stick to Jerry Rice. It's a stick, it's a six yard outside breaking route. Right. And I like building the backside, coach. Yeah. You know, what are we going to put on the backside of a stick? Yeah, right here we've got the uh, slant with the swing route as a backside concept. We also, as you mentioned, we also have the availability of bringing him in here on a spot route, sitting him down and swinging the guy too. So we got a lot of different things we can do back here on the backside. But again, what you've done with Hank is you've made it better. You've given the primary receiver more options. And even here on stick, you've given your stick route runner the freedom to turn over his inside yes. shoulder, something we never did. Yeah, well that's what, uh, versus all these match coverages, we thought that uh, one thing that makes it an advantage to the quarterback, he turns in, he knows there's no other 
you know, route that he can do. Now, if he's going to go ahead now and that linebacker's matching him, then he'll go ahead and continue to run out of it like you were talking about. So that's one thing that we did a little bit different. Talk to me a little bit about uh, our tight ends and our backs are big in our throw game. And uh, Ian Thomas right here, uh, in fact, he was one of the free agents in the draft today. He got selected. Good. But talk a little bit about the backs and the, the uh, tight ends in a passing game offense, how important they are. Well, they catch a lot of passes on inside breaking routes, dangerous routes. So it's important that the quarterback lets them see the throw. They got to see the ball leave the quarterback's hands. Uh, that way it doesn't get in on them. They don't have to catch a blind ball and there's not a tipped interception inside. And, I, and just what you were talking about here with the tight end, and it's one thing we've talked about with all of our receivers, when that ball, just as you mentioned, that ball is placed on the outside shoulder, that's where you catch, tuck, and turn to that side. Perfect. You know, you're always, you're always uh, again, catch, tucking, and turn to wherever that ball is put. And uh, you got to trust the quarterback that he's putting it obviously opposite the uh, defender. And one of the things I like that you did in your career is we used to have everybody rush to the pile. Our tight ends are going to break a tackle. Right. So our receivers down here at the bottom of the screen, at the top of the screen, they can rush to the pile and become lead blockers. Let's help our teammates make yardage after the catch. That's the whole premise of this West Coast offense, yards after the catch. Yeah, there's no doubt. Um, you know, Coach Allen, when uh, he and I were talking about coming here, he talked about three things as far as the offense was concerned. It was protect the ball. It was explosive plays. and explosive plays everybody thinks that's just throwing the ball deep down the field it's not it's what you just talked about it's catching the ball and then getting blockers ahead of you to make those into explosive plays and then the last part of it is tempo offense and uh, that's you know obviously a very important part of our offense here you see we're a little bit of uh, empty with it and again got stick to this side now we just went ahead and ran your favorite deal the bubble yeah, on the I back like side that. huh as long as you got a slant with it it's a good combination. Yeah. And again, split safety coverages. Uh, as you know, you can put your jerk routes over there. That's right. Which you've done in your career in the past. There's so right. many things you can do as long as the quarterback is decisive and he understands how these five-man protections work. That's right. Now here, he's reading that linebacker's matching. Linebacker's opening up his hips. He's eyeballing him down. So he's treating that now as a match linebacker. So now he'll go ahead and, and run out of it like he's doing. That's great. All right, we'll move on. All right, Uncle, all right? I want to talk to you a little bit. Uncle to us is both these guys running five yard unders. You know, you and I, uh, I think we probably got this from Tom Moore. Mm -hmm. You know, that was one of his favorite deals with Peyton. But, uh, and then having this guy running a read route. You know, and now talk to me about the read route with this guy. Did you, you read it middle field, open middle field close? We called that a poco. Uh -huh. He could run the post against cover two yep. or run the corner against single safety middle. Gotcha. So if the middle's closed, run the corner. If the middle's open like it is here, take it. Yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of ways to read this play. Sometimes you overwork that guy. Yes. You're looking at the home run, home run, and you miss the premise of the play, right. in my opinion. Right. When Peyton Manning was doing this in Indianapolis, yeah. this play, he was calling it at the line of scrimmage versus cover two. Yes. And he was going to throw that first under route until the cows came home. And he, he did not discriminate against anybody. It was a gain of six, a gain of nine, a gain of eight. But against cover two, he was trying to get that first under or the second under. Right. You're calling it uncle for the unders, that's, right? That's exactly right. right. I called it dusty for yeah. double under. Yeah. Uh, but you got to really be careful, I think, uh, with these inside breaking routes and how you read it because you don't want to be late. And if we got a single safety middle, we threw the ball to the Backside, backside receiver right. on a hand signal right. based on the leverage of the corner. That's right. There's a lot that goes on in yeah. this to get a six yard game. There's no doubt. There? Yeah, there is. And you know, uh, one thing that Tom talked to me about a little bit with this concept was that they had a signal to the uh, inside guy, the number three guy. If they were getting two man, then they obviously always wanted to get him on the corner round. Now that became their number one guy. No you doubt. Know? Yeah, no doubt. But uh, I've always liked this, just what you just said. I think uh, it's basically an easy throw. Here you see just what you're talking about. We're going to the number two receiver, the first under route, you know? And the one thing we always talked about with these guys, number one is getting their depth. This guy, number one down here, has got to do a better job of getting his depth. But the other part of this now is, is making sure you stay underneath any of the underneath coverage now. 
and keep coming. That's right. One coming behind you. That's right? right. That's exactly right. And then the big argument we had as a staff was the check down of the back. Yes. Uh, you know, are you going to check him over the ball? We checked him two yards deep and two yards outside the imaginary tight end on the backside. On the backside. That's where we had him. Yes. And it was a one-two backside check, two by two, we called it, as the third outlet. I like that. That's that's. Uh, you can see, obviously, we're putting him right over the mm -hmm. ball here in this particular check down. But that's another thing I think that I've really gained from you through the years is just having answers for the quarterback and how big check downs are. I mean, the running backs, they're huge in the passing game offense. Well, there's some coverages, the Tampa 2 coverages that are just begging That's right. you to throw the check downs. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're playing in quarters coverage or you're getting blitz coverages, perhaps you don't need to emphasize them that much that week. But, you know, these check downs can be huge resources against some of these coverages. That's right. I just, yeah, and I just think I love, uh, again, having that quarterback having answers all the time. Here we're, we're down in the red zone, and uh, same concept. And uh, as we talked about, we can do a lot of different things with this inside guy. See, I think when we get in the red zone, I think we can highlight the number three man a little bit more than we do in a regular field. Yes. Right? That's right. Uh, whether it's a Poco or a design corner route, because that's a safe throw down here in the red zone. It can be touched down or incomplete. That's right. Right? Yes. Uh, but in the regular field, you know, sometimes I think you're better off simplifying it for the quarterback under to under to check down. Yeah, I like that. I like that thought. Call his uncle, huh? Yep, under corner. That's a beautiful route again. Yeah, it is. Great throw. And if you're, you know, if you're reading it, sometimes you fall right into the corner because you see that corner chase the under. Right. You know what I mean? That's right. Yep. Next thing I want to talk to you about is uh, throwing fades. I want you to talk to us a little bit about the technique of the fade. You know, what you taught it, because I know you're a receiver guy at heart and also a quarterback guy. So just talk to me a little bit about the technique of a fade right here. Really, a lot of it depends on what yard line we're throwing this at, yes. right? You could yes, be right. at the one yard line, yes. the two yard line, here you are at the seven yard line. Right. So you got to be careful about orchestrating the dimensions of the field. Yes. Or it might not make sense to your guys. Yeah. Uh, we're looking for the midpoint of the end zone between the two pylons, right. putting the ball up in the catch radius nine to 10 yards deep. Yeah. But, um, you know, the big thing is isolate the right guy. Yes. Don't isolate everybody. Pick the one or two Hoosiers that have the best chance to win right. on the fade, the fly stop, the bullet slant. Let the quarterback get comfortable with them. But set them and give the quarterback, I think, some legitimate landmark as to where you want to throw it. Right. Between the two pylons, 10 yard, 10, 10 feet high maybe, or you want to put a, a spot in the back corner of the end zone. That's the angle I would throw it to right there. Right here? Yep. Did you think right here, did you, did you feel like this wide receiver should have taken it into the DB just a little bit more? I like him taking it up into his face yes. as much as possible. Right. Otherwise, the DB can pin you right into the boundary. That's but, right. You know, the big thing, those corners out there, if you have the threat of the fly, the fly stop and the bullet slant, yes. those three things, yes. it's hard for that guy to stop all three. Yeah, that's right. So they start playing inside to stop the bullet, and now you give them the free release and you have a chance to get those jump balls. Right. But How much do you work the fades? Every day? Uh, you know, it's a good, I think, a pre-practice drill. We used to put high jump pits down there so the guys could jump up high. Um, not as much, you know, we never had Calvin Johnson. Yeah. You know, we had Keyshawn Johnson. Yeah. So uh, we didn't throw as many high point fades later in my career than maybe I would have. Yeah. Big thing is give them a chance to make a play. Right. There's nothing worse than the quarterback popping up, popping it up off the field of play, right? Yes, no doubt. And a lot of times, these poor guys in a the shotgun, they're not getting the laces when they throw it. Yeah. I'll never forget, uh, 1997, I went and visited the Philadelphia Eagles. There was yeah. a, there was a first-year offensive coordinator by the name of John Gruden. Yeah, that was a long time ago. And I'll never forget you talking to me about basically throwing the deep ball, throwing the fades, and putting the ball right on top of the receiver's helmet. I, I tell you, that was money. I mean, that teaching point. And I can't tell you how many quarterbacks I've talked to that I'll say to them, hey, what are you aiming for when you throw the deep ball? And guys will, I don't know. I mean, I'm just throwing it. I mean, no aiming point. And I, I think through the years that really has helped 
our offenses with just the accuracy on deep balls. Just like right here, I thought this was a great job of putting the ball right on top of his helmet. I love it. Yeah. I mean, that's all a receiver can ask for. And the receiver's responsibility is, hey, if I don't catch it, nobody catches it. That's right. right? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're playing receiver, DB, you're writing the ticket for the organization here. That's right. So you got to put a guy out here with some clout, with some reliability, some physicality, and some, some hops, a guy that can go get it. That's right. Well, I appreciate talking ball with you, man. Great talking ball with you. Let's get going. We got some more screens here. Let's get into some. <laughs> We're going to go a little defense. Yeah, okay. We're going to attack a little right. defense right here. Hey, man. What a facility, though. We should stay here all night and talk ball.